I'm going to show you step by step how we screen print t-shirts with simulated or spot process. And we're starting right now. So the first thing we have to do is we have to coat our screens with the emulsion. This is a 23 by 31 screen with 230 mesh. What that just means is there are 230 fibers per inch. We're going to use this on our automatic machine. However, you can do this manually, but you will need a 20 by 24 screen. We're not going to use these or do it manually because we do have 100 t-shirts to do. So let's go ahead and coat the bigger screens. Screens are all coated. I put our emulsion away, washed out our scoop coater. Now it's time to go to the computer and do some separations. While our screens are drying, I'm going to open up the artwork our client sent to us in Adobe Photoshop. I'm going to open the image to scale and our largest print size that we can do is 12.5 inches wide, which gives us 14.75 inches high. I'm gonna make sure it's 300 DPI and I wanna open it in RGB color mode. Now that our art is open, I'm going to use Action Steps. This video is brought to you by us. Action Steps is actually a set of actions that I created to quickly separate artwork such as this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going, because this is going on a black t-shirt, I'm just going to put this on a black background. And I'm going to select layer one and I'm just gonna hit Command E to flatten that. And I'm gonna go over to channels. And the first thing I'm going to do is hit proof window up here at the top. What that basically does is essentially what that does is it gives you a second window to kind of proof side by side your separations just to see how well they are coming out. So I'm going to go to window arrange to a vertical and then I'm going to select this window here. The one that doesn't say proof window. Now I'm going to scroll down and click on black t-shirt. All right, our separations are all finished. They look pretty good. There are a couple little tweaks that I'm going to do. With any separation software, you are going to have to tweak it just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is just kind of pump up the, the red just a little bit and then give myself a designated brown spot color here. And also get rid of the colors that I don't necessarily need. Say for instance, green. If I turn green off, we're really not seeing any change. You know, if I were to turn the red off, obviously you see a change there. So I'm gonna go through and delete the spot colors that I do not need. And I can simply do that by scrolling down here and clicking on Merge Green. I'm also going to merge the magenta because there really isn't any magenta in here. And by merging the magenta, what it will do is if there is any information, it will apply it to our red spot color. Now we have a cyan spot and a blue spot. There is just this tiny little bit here and also in the helmet of the driver right here. I'm going to go ahead and merge because this looks more like cyan to me than it does blue. So I'm going to click on merge blue. We're looking pretty good here. Again, I want to bump up this red just a little bit. So I'm going to hold down command and click over my red channel. That will bring up my red selection. Then I'm going to go to my white base. And really what's going on here is the white base where it should be a bright red. We need to make this right here 100% white. So that way it's a nice bright red. And I'm going to do that by selecting the white base 
hitting Command L and I'm going to grab my black selector here, click right in that red, and I'm going to slide back my grayscale slider here. So that way I can, when I, I did make the, the white brighter, I also added to some of these areas and I want it to look like that. So this should be some of the black t-shirt showing through with a little bit of the red printed over it. All right, that looks good to me. The next thing I'm going to do is generate a brown because this brown just isn't as bright as this brown over here. So I'm going to scroll down to where it says create brown. Okay, we have our brown created. We've gotten rid of any extra spot colors that we don't need and we're ready to save this for output. What I'm going to do next is go over here to where it says black t-shirt EPS. I'm going to click on that and it will prepare the files that way I can just go ahead and save it as a EPS file and then we'll bring it into Illustrator. We have our registration template opened up. We'll have a link down in the description for both this template and for the action steps. We like helping fellow screen printers and artists and this will help us as well so that way we can continue to make videos like this. I'm going to go over to my layers and I'm going to hit command shift P. I'm going to find my artwork. Here's our EPS file that we just created. I'm going to double click on it. Now what that did is it brought in all of our spot colors. I'm just going to click it and put it on the artboard at full size. And here are all of our spot colors. This is our print order that we will go in our white base, red, yellow, cyan, gray, white, brown. I think brown will probably put before the white. I like to print the white last. And then I'm just going to line this up to my artboard. I'm going to drag my art layer down below my center and registration marks. That way I can see my registration marks. It looks like we just kind of need to move those out of the way just a little bit. So I'm going to unlock those, lock my art layer, and I'm just going to drag them out of the way. And we're going to save that file. We're pretty much all set. I'm going to hit Command P, which brings up our print dialog box. I'm going to go to output and you'll see we have our spot colors here ready to go and it looks like we have seven total screens that we'll be printing out if you have a rip software you'll want to set your lpi to 45 and your angle to 22.5 your dot doesn't really matter a whole lot i tend to like to use round but ellipse works just as well so let's go ahead and hit print and put some film in our printer you're probably saying to yourself but Matt, I don't have a rip software. Oh, that's okay, because I have you covered with action steps. Let me show you how to rip your separations in action steps. Next thing we're going to do is we're gonna set our LPI, our, our dot pattern for our artwork. We're using 230 mesh screens, which 45 LPI will work just great. So I'm gonna click on 45 LPI and hit continue. And then I'm going to click merge steps now. So that's how you could easily go about creating your own half tones within Photoshop with action steps. I'm now going to go to file and print. You'll want to select your printer. In our case, we have an Epson 1430 and you're going to want to click separations. Make sure your printer is set to the correct size. We are using 13 by 19 film, so we're good there. And you'll want to scroll down here to the bottom where it says printing marks. And what we'll do is we'll select the registration marks and then the center crop marks, and we can include that on every piece of film, so that way we can register up our separations on press. You will at least need Photoshop. I'll leave a link down in the description, so that way you can get Photoshop, and it will kick a little bit of a commission our way, so that way we can continue to do videos like these for you guys, but let's get to the film. Now that I have my film done, I cleaned the exposure unit just to get any dust off of the glass. You don't want any dust or dirt on the glass because that will lead to little pinholes in your print. I'm sure we'll run into some. It's, sometimes it's unavoidable and we'll show you that once we get set up. But let's go ahead and take our screens because they're nice and dry now and we'll expose this film. I'm going to place my art onto the screen. This is the t-shirt side of the screen. So you're going to see your image reverse. Once we're flipped the correct way, the side that you put ink in, it'll read correctly. With our particular setup, with 23 by 31 screens, I center up my art 11 and a half inches this way. And for our particular press, it's gonna be five inches down. And I just want to make sure my center marks are nice and square with the screen. 
So now I'm just going to take a little bit of scotch tape. I'm going to tape my film down. I'm going to flip the screen around so that way the film is on the bottom side where the shirt would go. The light's going to shine up. This vacuum tabletop, what it will do is completely sandwich that film together so that way no light can get around it. And that's how we get our half tones and just an image exposed in general. So with our TZ Emulsion with a multi-bulb fluorescent tube exposure unit like this, I'm gonna set my time to about three minutes and burn the image. While this image is exposing, what I'm going to do is grab a screen out of the cabinet and start setting up my next image. So that way it'll be ready to go once this finishes. All right, our image is nice and exposed. Let's go over to the washout booth and I'll show you how to rinse out half tones. First thing I'm going to do is just remove my film. And I'm going to take my water hose with just the, the standard pressure coming from the lines. And I'm just going to rinse the front and back repeatedly back and forth for about a good 10 to 15 seconds. And essentially what that does, why I like to do it this way, is it keeps both the front and back wet so that way your image will fall out evenly. If you just spray it on one side and a little bit on the other side, you'll notice that it won't fall out as even. All right, you can see our image is starting to wash out. What I'm going to do is just take my water hose and just lightly kind of rinse it. I'm going to get right up on it. With this particular emulsion, the half tones hold really well and they wash out fairly easy. I want to be sure to get my registration marks and just make sure I have every little half tone rinsed out that should be rinsed out. All right, we're looking pretty good. One of the things you can do is take your film, just compare the image, make sure you're not missing anything. Looks like we're good to go. I'm going to flip the screen around and then I'm going to just kind of give it a little bit of a sheet of water to kind of rinse some of this underexposed emulsion on this side because the light tends to get to the back side or the side that has your ink. It will take longer for it to get to that and therefore it'll be a little softer. You'll notice that it does have a little bit of film so I'm just going to rinse some of that film off. And I'm kind of pointing the water hose down so that way I'm not pushing this way, forcing my little dots out of the mesh. Although again, this emulsion does a really good job of holding those half tones and them not washing out. All right, that about does it. What I'm going to do is take this and then I'm going to set it outside, let the sun post cure it. It will harden it a little more and it will dry it a little faster. And then we'll move on to some other screens. My next screen is ready to go. We taped it up while the other was exposing. A little bit of a pro tip is while you're working on one screen, you can be working on the other. So for example, while this one is exposing, just for demonstration's sake, I did not do that just so I could show y'all how to rinse out the image. But while I was rinsing that one out, this one could have been in the exposure unit exposing. By the time I get that one finished rinsing out, this one will be ready to go and I'll have the other one set up. I could put it in the exposure unit and start rinsing out the exposed screen. So let's go ahead and do that and I'll demonstrate that. Something I get asked often is, Matt, I thought you weren't supposed to get the screens out in the sunlight. Well, with this emulsion, it's not that big of a deal if you have a dark room that is ideal. 
We do store our screens in our cabinet where it's nice and dark and only bring them out into the sunlight for just a moment and it's not going to hurt anything. It will start to expose it just a touch but with this emulsion it's slow exposing therefore it's, it's more forgiving so we're able to do that. Just thought I'd let you know that. I just finished exposing my last screen. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna set it outside. I'm gonna let these dry. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and pull aside my inks and my squeegees that I need to do the job. Once the screens are dry, we'll go ahead and start setting things up. I have my inks and squeegees all set aside. So what we have here is a Wilflex white. That's a low bleed white, works really great. Then we have a C8 Cool Gray. We have just the brightest red off of our shelf somewhat of a cyan sky blue, lemon yellow, and then we have a sienna brown. These are all just standard off the shelf inks with the exception of the C8 Cool Gray, which will work really great with Action Seps or any other separation software you decide to use. As you can see, I got my squeegee set up at their approximate stations. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to do our white base. We are going to flash it. And then we're going to use a flattening screen in which I'll leave a card up at the top on how to make one of these. This will help get the print nice and smooth. It's basically a screen with a Teflon sheet and a little bit of reducer. I'm still experimenting with that. Then we'll have our light blue, our brown, our red, yellow, gray, and then white again. If you're on a manual press, you won't have to really worry about setting your squeegees up like we did over here, but you will need to print them in order. Generally, your red's gonna go before your yellow, and then your greens, your blues, your purples, your gray, and then your white. Screens are all nice and dry, so I'm going to bring them all in, and we'll go ahead and set up the press. We have our screens all in place. I have my machine on. If you're on a, a manual, you'll just set them up in order, just similar to what you would do on an automatic. The only difference here is that on a manual press, you'll be pulling the squeegees by hand. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up or register up my first screen, which is the white base, to the center line in our palette here. So I'm just going to move my palette over that has a center line, and I am going to Go ahead and raise the table up on this machine. If you're on a manual, you'll just lower your screen down onto one of your stations with a center line drawn. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we'll put some ink into the screen and we'll test print that white. Thanks. We'll put some ink into the screen, do a test print. We'll flash that and we'll use those registration marks you saw in the template to register the rest of the screens up. So let's go ahead and do that. I have both center marks here at the top and at the bottom of my screen. I'm just lining these center marks up with the center marks on my palette and that will make sure our graphic is nice and straight. And I'm also during this time going to make sure that my graphic isn't too high up. All right, that looks good to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and lock this down. What you wanna do with your inks before you toss them into the screen is you do want to just kind of stir your inks up really well and that will kind of help loosen the ink up. That way it'll flow through the screen a little easier, especially with this white. Whites tend to be a little thicker, but by doing this, it'll make it kind of flow through the screen like butter. You also want to be sure to put a generous amount of ink into your screen and you don't want to mash the ink down into your graphic because it can give you a little bit of a false reading. A little bit of a pro tip for you. Before we do our test print, what we have to do is we have to put down a little bit of palette adhesive. What I like to use is a spreadable palette adhesive. It's water-based. I'll leave a link down below. What I'm going to do essentially is just send this over to my flash. I'm gonna flash it so that way this dries and becomes tacky. And then we'll use a test pellon to do our initial test print on and the register off of. 
So I'm just gonna set the machine up so that way it sends it over to our flash, our flash is on. If you're using a manual, you'll have to let your flash heat up unless you have a quartz unit, kind of like what we have here on the automatic press. And I am just going to send this over, let it do its warming up process. Okay, everything's nice and warm and tacked up. So what I'm going to do now is take my test pellet on. I'll leave a link down in the description where you can find these. They're pretty affordable rather than using t-shirts. Although sometimes we use t-shirts, but in this case, I happen to have some test pellet on. I'm gonna send this over to station number one and we're gonna go ahead and do our test print and flash it. looking pretty good. It's nice and flashed. One of the things you'll notice about these test pellons, they do tend to shrink up a little bit wherever the print is not. It's not going to be too much of an issue. This little registration mark is wanting to come up some, but that shouldn't hold us back too much. Now what I'm going to do is send this to each one of the stations and I'm going to register everything up to these marks here. And then we'll do some test prints with each of the colors. And real quick before I do that, I do not advise moving your, your pallets, rotating it, your carousel, however you want to put it with your hands what you want to do is press on your opposing pallets that way you're not shifting anything over here during the registration process all right while well, i got you guys in here for a close-up these are the registration marks here that I was talking about. We're just lining those up in all four corners and also our center marks here. But also more importantly, you wanna see how your artwork is lining up to your, your under base because sometimes these registration marks can contract in, not all the time, but if nothing has shifted, these registration marks will definitely help tell you which way you need to move your screen up, down, left, right, you know, if you need to angle it a little bit. So we're looking pretty good. Sometimes when you go to lock in your screens, which I'm gonna go ahead and do that now, things can move just a little bit depending on your press. But you can also fine tune things if you have the ability to do that with micro registration which this press does have micro registration. So we're gonna use that to really dial things in and get everything spot on because you can be off just by a hair and you'll see that white base peek out. All right, that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna completely lock it down. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go around to each station, register up the rest of my screens, and then we'll toss in our squeegees along with ink. I've got my ink set up in each of the stations. Obviously we have the base already there. Here's our flattening screen. And then head number four, we have a light blue. Head number five, we have our sienna brown. Number six, we have our red. Number seven, we have our yellow. Eight, we have our gray. And last but not least on head number nine, we have our white. Now that our ink is all set into place, what I'm going to do is this essentially is just clear vinyl sticker transfer tape. And I like to use this to do my test prints on top of. Now I'm gonna show you two different methods. I'll leave a link down in the description where you can find some of this, but this is essentially just clear transfer tape for vinyl stickers. And I'm going to place this over my graphic. One of the ways I'm going to, or one of the, the methods that I'm going to demonstrate here all right, so we essentially laid this down over and it will act as a dry erase board. But the first method I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and print all of my colors aside from the white base. I'm not going to flash it, but I'm gonna print all my colors on top of this and that will allow me to see how far off or on they are and what adjustments I need to make. Sometimes I'll, I'll do that and then I'll go back, wipe it down and go to a screen that happens to be a problem, let's say the red happens to be an issue, I can go back and print just the red down, adjust my micro registration until it's spot on, and then move on to an actual production sample. 
But let's go ahead and run this off. I'm gonna turn all of my stations on that all the colors that I want to print down and we'll follow this palette around as it comes all the way around and we'll see how we did. All right, I got everything active that I want active and we'll just go ahead and send this thing around and we'll follow it. So normally we'll do the white base twice just to clear it. Let me turn the delay off here. And so it would have flashed and then done the flattening screen. Here we go with our blue. With all these colors, guys, we're just gonna do them once. See, this one did not go all the way back, so I need to make adjustment there. So we're just hitting these once because we don't wanna put down too much ink. Uh, during the pr production run, we're going to do just one hit as well. We might do it twice on certain colors just to pump those up, but for now, we're just doing one hit. And we're allowing some of that ink to build up on the back of the screens. We don't need to flash with spot process. And look at that. Right off the bat, we are looking pretty good. Obviously my brown isn't down here where it needs to be because I needed to adjust the, the station over there. But if you're on manual press, you won't have mistakes like this happen. And you probably might be just about ready to tape these marks off. However, I am going to go back and tweak this a little bit because the red is off just a hair there. So I need to move the whole screen down. And I think everything else looks pretty good. Yeah, I think that's the only adjustment that we're really going to do is we're going to move that red down just a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and wipe this off. We'll go over to our red station, whichever station is at. And I'll demonstrate the other method registering up each one of your screens. But with just that one red screen, it, this would be a whole lot longer if I went through and showed you an example on each one of them. <laughs> so you're gonna need yourself a rag t-shirt and I am just going to wipe all of this ink off and I will send this over to our red station. Here we are at station number five. We have our test pell on underneath our station. If you're on a manual press, you won't have to do all this walking around. So that makes your setup just that much easier. So I'm going to go ahead and, and do a test print on number five. I forgot in the process just whether I needed to move it up or down. So I'm gonna, I'm printing that again so that way I can take a look at it. So we need to go down just a hair. I'm going to go ahead and wipe this up. Sorry about bumping the camera. I got you guys right in my workspace so that way you guys can see exactly how I do this stuff. That's good enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unlock my micro registration and we're going to move the entire print down some. And so I got my little crosshairs here with our micro registration and I'm just going to move that down just a touch. All right, that's good. And you don't want to overshoot it. You just want to do it hair by hair, really. Got everything locked down. Let's go ahead and give it another whirl. Again, we're still doing it just one hit at a time. More than likely that's how production will go. Okay, I think we are on the money. Now that we have that finished, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a fresh test pell on down and we're going to print the white base, flash it, let it go through its entire process and print off some samples or test prints. And we may need to do that two, three, four times before everything settles in and is looking great because if you don't do that and you start printing your client's shirts, shirt one through six, might just drastically change and by the time you get to shirt number seven it'll be how it should be so let's go ahead and run off some test prints first all 
All right, so that is looking pretty awesome. I'm pretty happy with how the registration is coming out. I don't really see any white peeking out where it shouldn't. It's looking pretty good. And you can see the registration looks awesome. Even though it, it might appear that one of the colors is slightly off, that's that, again, that test bell on just kind of shrinking up. So use your art as the guide. It does look like the brown, because remember we didn't completely print the brown, but that brown could come towards me just a little bit. Aside from that, I'm happy with it, and we'll just run off one more test print. Another test print, and we are dialed in. This thing is looking good. I don't think I need to do any more test prints. Now at this point, what I'm going to do is tape off these registration marks and find any little pinholes. And that essentially is just ink in spots where it shouldn't be. And I'm going to fix that by just taping around the screen. And that will be the easiest solution. So let's go ahead and do that. Now that we're finished taping everything off, what I'm going to do is remove this test bell on. As you can see, this thing is just sticking to my palette. I'm going to come back and get the rest of that off before I go into production. But what I'm going to use is one of the actual production shirts. And I'm just gonna make sure that I haven't missed any pinholes. I think I'm pretty good. But rather than finding out if you're on a automatic, you wanna find out six, eight, 10 t-shirts later. So I'm gonna run this one off as a full production sample or full production piece, and we'll see how it comes out. Woo, it's getting hot in here. So we have our test print ready to go or our actual production sample. First thing I have to do is turn on my conveyor dryer, let things start warming up. And in the meantime, I am going to, my box just fell. In the meantime, I am going to let all the pallets warm up. You want to warm up your pallets, put some fresh tack down, so that way those t-shirts do not move. Also, by warming the pallets up, it'll make production a little bit faster. So I'm going to warm both the oven and pallets up, toss in a little bit more ink, and collect my shirts. Now that I got some shirts over here, the dryer's warming up, I got my press loaded up with some ink. What I'm going to do now is put my press into warm-up mode. Now, if you're on a manual, what you want to do is just rotate your pallets underneath the flash and let them sit for a moment. With our press, it has a warm-up option. While it's warming up, I'm going to use a spray bottle with some water, a scrub brush, and my pallet adhesive. I'm going to remove some of the old pallet adhesive, put some fresh pallet adhesive down so that way they're nice and tacky. Nothing moves. Our registration stays spot on and I can do that while everything is warming up and the press is rotating. So let me go ahead and allow me to demonstrate. So I'm just gonna spray a little water on. This first run, I'm essentially just getting off some excess, excess tack. And then we'll go down and put some fresh tack onto the pallets. And it's just about time to change this pallet tape out because we've done a lot of shirts on them and I've misprinted quite a bit onto the board. So if that happens to you, know that that happens to us as well. It's not the end of the world. And these pallets might warm up pretty quick because it is quite hot today. For it being April, it feels like it's in the 90s, the mid 90s. I'm gonna stop this just for one second because we do have this one little spot where my Pill on stuck, so I'm gonna scrub that off, get that out the way so our palette is nice and smooth and our prints will turn out nice and smooth as well. If you have any crap on your palettes, it's going to show up on your prints. All right, let's go ahead and continue that. Now, at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some palette adhesive down and it will flash this pallet tack and warm it up as well. Essentially, it's just gonna dry it out. Kind of killing two birds with one stone, if you know what I mean. All right, it's starting to look like we got enough tack down. Just wanna make sure underneath my print area everywhere, there's enough tack. 
keep this thing from moving. And I think we achieved that. All right, everything's nice and warmed up. Pallets are warm. The conveyor is warm. I made sure to check my temperature, make sure it's getting to about 340 degrees. Now comes the fun part. Let's go ahead and get to production. Well, that should do it for this tutorial. I hope it helped out a lot in your journey, learning to screen print spot process or simulated process. If you have any questions, let us know down in the comments. Give this video a thumbs up. Be sure to share, subscribe if you haven't. Until next time, we'll see you later.